Okay, this is section 1.4, rectangular coordinates. We're going to use the distance formula to determine if a set of coordinates forms a right triangle, and we're also going to use the midpoint formula to find the center of a circle. So here I have a uh, plane, a coordinate plane here, and you can see uh, the quadrants drawn in along with this little C that I've drawn in. So it's just to help you kind of remember the direction of the quadrants, just in case you've forgotten quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, I also have the distance formula here written out, but I'm actually going to go up here and derive it so that you don't really have space for this on your note sheet, but that's okay. So I'm going to start off with two arbitrary points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. So if I'm interested in finding the distance between those two points, let's call that d, what I'm going to do is actually create a right triangle. So I'm going to derive the distance formula by using Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so I drop an altitude here, create a horizontal, and now I can express this vertical distance here as the absolute value of y2 minus y1. We talked about distance yesterday. And here, the distance, the horizontal distance, is going to be x2 minus x1. Okay, now using Pythagorean theorem and just applying Pythagorean theorem, I know that the distance between x2 and x1 squared plus the distance between y2 and y1 squared should equal d squared. Now solving for d, so I want to isolate and get d, the distance, by itself. I take the square root of both sides. Now what's nice is that the absolute values are going to drop. We don't actually need them, they're unnecessary. And that's because of a property that we talked about yesterday. Remember, recall that the absolute value of x squared is equal to x squared. So I dropped the bars, and now I have the distance formula here. So we're going to be using that today to determine if a set of three points here is going to be forming a uh, right triangle. Okay, so our very first question here gives us three points. Uh, three coordinates here, BIG for triangle BIG, and we're trying to determine whether it's a right triangle. So we're actually going to use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, and we're going to find the side lengths of B, I, I, G, and B, G. So it's helpful to just draw a little sketch for yourself, um, label the points. I'm not really checking to see if I've labeled these points correctly or drawn it correctly in a coordinate plane, because all I'm really interested in is making sure that I'm going to um, find the distance here between B, I. So the distance between B, I, I'm going to take x2 minus x1 and square that number. So I get 5 squared. And if I had chosen to do uh, x1 minus x2 here, I would have gotten negative 5 squared. And remember the result um, when you square a number, whether it's a positive or a negative, is always going to be positive. So it really doesn't make a difference. I like to do this a little quicker. I just look at the two numbers here, and I take the absolute value of the distance between them. So the distance, be, the distance between these two numbers is a total of 8 units, so I'm going to square 8. Okay. Then for IG, I do the same. So for IG, I look at the distance between 6 and negative 16. These are 22 units apart, so I square 22. And now I'm going to look at the Y values. These are 2 units away, and I'm going to square 2. Repeat that process now for BG. Okay, now for BG, we have distance of 17 squared for the x direction, and in the y direction, a distance of 10. So now I'm going to simplify each radical here. So 25 plus 64 gives me root 89. Uh, root, what is that, 2, oh, I'm sorry, 484. Root 484 plus 4 is root 489. And okay, actually, sorry, it's my bad. Root 488. All right, last one. So we have 289, root 289 plus 100. So square root of 389. Okay, now um, we're going to use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem because what we need to do is show that the uh, longest length squared right, is equal to the sum of the two shorter lengths. So the longest length is going to be the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse squared should always be, the hypotenuse should always be the longest side. Now in this case, that would mean that IG in this triangle should be the hypotenuse since it's the largest side length. 
So if I take IG and square it, it should equal BI squared plus BG squared. So we're going to check to see whether or not this holds true. Okay, so right now we don't know. So when I take IG squared, root 488, and I square that, I get 488. So now I'm just checking, I'm going to shortcut this here real quick. 488, does that equal BI squared, which is going to be 89, plus 389 squared, which is going to be 389. So 488, let's see, this is 478. This is not equivalent, so this is not a right triangle. Okay, so let's move on to the next problem. Okay, again, it's helpful here to draw a uh, little diagram. So we have the center of a circle is at negative 3, 2, and a point on the circle is 5, 4. So we have the center, negative 3, 2, and anywhere on that circle, let's just draw here, is the point 5, 4. So if they're asking me to find the radius here, I'm actually trying to find the distance between those two points. So you guys can go ahead, do this problem, check your answer with the answer key to make sure you're doing that correctly. Okay, in number three, they're asking us to find the midpoint of two points, G and M here. Um, there's a second part to the equation here, or to the problem, but I'm going to have you guys do all of this on your own and check your answer with the answer key. All I'm going to show you, though, is the midpoint formula. So if I want to find the distance between two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, I'm really finding the average, so the midpoint here, I think I just said distance, but I want to find the midpoint. Sorry about that. The midpoint here is going to be the average of the distance. So what I'm going to do, you know, if I ask you to find the average between two test results, you know, you got a 92 and a 94 on a test, what's the average? You know you're supposed to add it and then divide by the number of tests. So in this case, if I want to find the average, the middle between these two points, the distance here, I want to take x1, add x2 to that, and divide it by 2 because there are two points that I'm trying to average. And I'm going to do the same for the y coordinates, y1 plus y2, divide that in half, and this is going to be my midpoint formula. So go ahead and do that. Um, to find the midpoint of GM. And then the second question here, second part of the question says if G and M are midpoints, or sorry, are endpoints of the diameter of a circle, find the center and radius. So now G and M are the endpoints of the circle. You should realize that this center here is the same as the midpoint that you just found. So you've already partly, partially answered this question after you found the, the center. And the only thing left to do now is to find the radius. So you can do that by using the distance formula. Okay, go ahead and flip the page. We're going to be on number four now. Um, so number four asks us to find the coordinates of all the points in this isosceles trapezoid to the right. So you're going to need to recall that an isosceles trapezoid has congruent um, sides, uh, congruent legs. So this segment here is congruent to this segment. Now the uh, bases of a trapezoid are also parallel. So if I know that these are parallel, when I drop this altitude down here, both altitudes here, I form right angles. Um, I also know that the base angles of this trapezoid are congruent, so I actually have two congruent triangles by angle angle side. Okay, so now that I know that is true, I can assume that these two segments here are actually congruent as well by CPCTC. So now, if I already know uh, that this segment or this point here, uh, B, is at G's, G, comma zero, and I know over here that this distance um, is represented by E, right? Because point R is at E, comma F, so this distance is at E, and that means that A here is the same as the x coordinate is G minus E. Okay, so G minus E. Now it's also the same height as this point here R, so we have G minus E comma F, okay, for A. Now C is pretty easy, hopefully <laughs> you know this one, it's at the origin, so zero, zero. Okay, now part five here, um, or question five, asks us to use the distance formula to prove that the diagonals of a, an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. So I want to show that RB 
is equal to AC. So the distance of segment RB should be equivalent to AC if the diagonals are congruent. So please go ahead and do the distance formula. Um, actually, you know what, let's do this one together. So RB, if I take the x coordinates, so let's do g minus e squared plus uh, 0 minus f squared, I will get the square root of g minus e squared plus negative f squared, which is still just f squared. If I find the distance of AC, I have g minus e minus 0 squared plus f minus 0 squared and I get g minus e squared plus f squared. So if you notice RB is in fact equivalent to AC and therefore RB is congruent to segment AC. Okay, in number six, it asks us to find the coordinates of all the points in this square. And for this one, you want to recall that a square has congruent uh, diagonals that bisect one another. So square has congruent diagonals, and they bisect each other. So if we look here, our horizontal distance out to point A is B units away. So this point here is B comma. Now, if this length here is B units away, that means that this segment over here is B units away, which means that this segment and this segment are all B units long. So, if I'm trying to find the vertical coordinate here, the Y for this point A, I'm going to look and see, okay, this is A units away plus B units away. So, I'm going to express that as A plus B. Now, for point B here, this time I have an x coordinate of 0, right? We're not moving from the x axis, but we are moving vertically A units followed by B plus another B. So that's A plus 2B. And lastly, for point C here, we are going to go negative B units away from the x or from the origin in the x direction. And we are going up, again, A plus B units. So A plus this part here gives me A plus B units. So now, the last question here, number seven, asks you to find all coordinates um, of the points in this rectangle. And I'd like you guys to try this one on your own. You are uh, going to check your answer um, with my answer key so that you can see if you did it okay. And then uh, tomorrow in class, we'll do some practice problems. All right, we're done.